So it's day 11 now. How are you people doing? Already 10 days is gone. Like one third of our total duration we have already completed. In today's video, we're going to talk about internals of Java, how the memory management works. Every time you define a variable, you define a method, you create an object. How is the memory playing a role there is what we're going to understand in today's video. Let's try to understand few things that how the programs are normally structured, how the codes are normally organized. So if I have to go and draw the diagram, I've already shown you people. So first of all, your project will be there. And inside the project, there will be a, some root folder. And inside the root folder, your entire project will be following this structure. So there will be something called as a package. And inside the package, there should be Java class. And inside the Java class, typically you will have the, the class and the corresponding, you know, fields and methods. Fair enough. So this is how normally your whole project is kind of structured. Now, since we have understood everything that you do in the terms of the code, whenever this execution happens, this execution always happens inside the memory. Whether you initialize a variable, you set a value, the method is being executed, everything happens inside the memory. So it becomes very important now that we understand that how internally the memory is managed, how objects are defined, how the method execution happens. All of that understanding is very extremely important. So let's get started and understand that how it works. In the world of Java, sir, if I go and talk about the memory and Java gets memory from mostly called as RAM, there are two allocated spaces or reasons where the Java items are being stored. One of the dedicated space is called as a stack and another dedicated space is called as a heap. In Nutshell normally said that everything which is related to the objects is stored in the heaps and everything else is stored in the stack. Now let's try to understand this with the help of an example. Let's say that I have a class called as student, right? And then it has a method called as public static void main method. Let me quickly go and write the code and then put it here and then understand how everything works. So let me open my Eclipse and let me go and define a class to understand the memory. So let me go and define a new class and I'll be going to call this understanding memory. Okay, and let's say this class has a method called as public static wide method one and then it has something called int method one field one equals to 12 and then I go and say that string something of this sort let's say that and then I have something called as a public static void method two and then I go and say that int method two field two and we go and call it a string equals to str. Just assume that. Let me also make it let me make it as a boolean field as false. And then inside this, I go and call this function called as a method one. And then I have a method called as public static void main string ARGS. And here I go and call this function called as a method. We go and print this just out. Inside the main method 
and then I will call it as method one. Let me copy this code and paste it here on my screen. Let me clear this. I hope you are able to see this clearly right now. Cool. So now let's say that if I start executing this code, if I start executing in this code, what happens? First of all, the main method is executed. As soon as you start it, once one 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 data structure or a space is there, uh, which which gets created, and that's that you know that space is called as a stack, right? What happens in this case? First of all, this main method is created. So one frame gets created here, and I go and call this as a main method frame, right? And this gets pushed inside the stack. And then everything which is inside this main, right, will come here. Let's say that, for example, here also I define something called as int age equals to 99. So this age equals to 99 will be stored here. Now as I move further and from here I go and call the method 1. So I come here inside the method 1 and the another frame gets created for the method 1. And inside the method 1 there's a there's a local variable that I have defined m1 f1 equals to 2. So this will take some space here m1 underscore f1 is equals to 12. That's how it's called. Now, right now, I'm not calling the method 2. Let's assume that after this, I again go and uh, uh, call something called as a method 2. Now, before I go and call the method 2, this method 1 will be executed. So, when the method 1 will be executed, this was initially post. Right? This was initially post. When method 1 was executed, this will be further popped out. When it pops out, uh, this will again get deleted. Right, so all the local variables which was there in the method one, now it is out of the context, everything will get erased, it will be deleted. Now again, what happens? This calls method two happens. So when the method two happens, uh, again, what you will do is that let me go and delete all this stuff so that it looks clean. We're going to push, we're going to push. What you're going to push? You're going to push this method two. Method two. And this method 2 has a field called as m2 underscore f2 equals to false. And this method 2 again invokes method 1. So again a new frame comes of the method 1. And then again this field m1 f1 equals to 12. And then when the method 1 is executed then it will be popped out. When it pops out, it gets deleted from inside. So I go and delete this. Now method two is also done. So this is also has to be pop out. So when it pop out again, it has to be deleted. And then finally, when everything is done, then this pop, this main method will also have to be popped out. And then this has to be deleted. So I go and delete this. And finally, the stack is empty. So this is how all the remaining variables. So here, what I went talked about all the methods, all the method and its state are stored in the in the stack. Fair enough. Now this is another situation. Let's say that I go and define something like this. I go and call it person p equals to new person. Whenever I go and do this, this variable is called as the instance, not instance, it's called as the reference variables. Reference variable. This variable is called as the reference variable. Now, how does this work? So where is this stored and where is this stored? So as soon as you go and create a new object, this is a new object which gets created. So for storing the object, we have a separate step called as a space called as a heap. So as soon as this, this person object, 
person object will be created here which is there on the heap on the other hand on the stack this is my stack let's say that this is created inside the main method right that public study requirement so if this is the main method this person p which is a reference where is staying here and this guy knows the address knows the reference of the object creator so whenever you go and create an object the object always resides on the heap but the variable call as the reference variable which actually has the address where the object lies in the heap they are stored inside the stack itself they are stored inside the stack itself now the third types of variable which we need to cover now is called as the instance variables so for example in this case let me go and no. let me go and open my Eclipse and take one class for example person. So if I go and take this code for an example and uh, paste here. Right, you can see the code here. Now all these fields which you see, name, age, height, which does not have a static keyword attached to it, these are all called as the instance or object variables. So whenever you go and do something like this, person p equals to new person, and let's say that you can pass all these values like Vishwa 99 and blah blah inside the heap this is my heap a, a person object will be created and this person object will have a value of say for example name equals to Vishwa age equals to 99 height equals to 6 so all this state of this variable will be stored in the heap itself so i'm again repeating if it is an instance variable because it is a part of the instance it is part of the objects they are stored in the heap itself now let me make it a little more complicated right so let me go and take this up and move it into the new screen okay and let's assume that Oh, I cannot write it. Let me delete this. Let me take this up, paste this. So let me go and copy this and paste this here. Let's say that I have added one more field here called as car, car. Okay, so see, all this thing which you see here is more of like a primitives except this one this is also an object and let's say this is a object now if i have to go and define a person object i need to first define the car object because here also i'll have to go and pass something called as car car and here it becomes this dot car equals to car now let's try to see that how this is stored right so when you go and call, first of all, what you'll have to do, you have to go and create call as car c equals to new car. When you go and do this in the stack, you will have c and in the heap, you will have the car object and c will be pointing to the car object. Fair enough. Then what you do, you do that person P equals to new person and then in that case you go and pass car and all that stuff so here what happens here the person object is created and then it is a reference call as a car and this car is referencing to this object in the heap so sir this is how typically the memory is managed 
in the world of Java when you are programming in either heap or the stack. I hope you had a clear understanding. If not, please watch this video again because this is one of the very core concepts and there are very high chances that interviewer is going to grill you on this concept. So finally, we have come to the end of day 11 video as well. We are moved in the you know, one third of the course is done, right? We are in the section of the two third of the course. It's 11th day. I hope you are having a great journey so far. I just want to make sure the energy, the consistency, the zeal that you started on the day one should also continue till the last day. So make sure that you keep on learning it. Put the comments because that's excite me as you know what I'm looking at every video in the comment section that what you guys are writing for me. Please do let me know how your experience of learning is going on and I'll make sure that some cool amazing concepts keep on coming on this channel.